All right, we're gonna go through some of the code that we have here. And what I'm gonna do is basically go through some of the variables. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole thing um, of this job sketch that I have here. So first of all, you'll notice, you'll notice that uh, I'm using libraries from adafruit.com, uh, the tftlcd and the touchscreen.h. Uh, great libraries, uh, thank you for those uh, guys at Adafruit. And so if we scroll down here, um, this is taken, uh, this is a derivative. It actually started out as the paint sketch, uh, the TFT paint sketch, uh, heavily modified actually. Uh, the color definitions, um, I put some different colors in here and uh, I'll just do a separate video on, I actually have a um, uh, an RGB to hex converter for, for to find these numbers pretty easy. Uh, I'm not gonna go over everything, just the stuff that's customizable. So we're gonna start with battery check. That's the value of how often uh, the sketch checks the battery voltage and then maps uh, the little battery icon here. If I can drag this picture in here to show you. Um, this little icon here will we'll scoot down. Uh, you'll see in the video sometime, but that's how often that guy updates. So that's, uh, that's what that is there. Um, try to grab this so it's a little bit smoother here. Um, Basically, the next thing here, this is stuff that you're more than free to change any of this, but it's really not customizable stuff. Uh, we get to the splash screen here. Um, and then you can do uh, this fill rectangle here is your status bar, which is the bar up at the top. So if you want to, um, this blue bar, your status bar message here, that blue is the JJ color. Um, what you can do is uh, change that color if you want a different color status bar. <laughs> That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, this is the battery body is white. Uh, the battery tip is white. Um, the battery fill that's if the battery goes down uh, instead of blue background of course uh, we want that black. Um, this is the color of the message box here and uh, if we keep going down Try to make this font as big as I could so it's easily readable on video. Um, basically, the sleep is configured in the sketch itself uh, and it reads it from EEPROM. Uh, so there's no real need to, to really change any of that. Um, now here's, uh, we start with, with this. You see this says area one right here. And uh, whoops, sorry about that. Um, where it says area one is, um, this right here is your first button. It's button. It's button one. So to customize the names, I put notes on this very first one. So this is you know if the area is pressed and you know the page value. I'll get into that a little little bit. But it may, menu five, button one. Here's where you change the name. If you wanted to say you know, hi Jeremy or whatever you want this thing to say, that's where the name actually gets changed. Is that string right there? And a page four, button one. So you continue on and on, and this is where all of the all of the stuff gets changed uh, in here. So you can change all your button names, and this goes on for the first button. Uh, you can see here there's area two. Won't bore you with a, with a whole nine yards here, but uh, button two. And there's area three. There's six areas. Uh, basically, there's four. Uh, here's five. And here is six. So we get past all that, and then we get to the home button here. And the home button is, uh, you know, if the home button is pressed, uh, and if you're leaving the settings page, uh, there's some extra code here. And what, why that is, is because if you'll notice on the um, on the settings page, there's a lot more drawn on the screen. And so normally, when the screen refreshes from menu to menu. Um, when it just has to redraw this, it's a lot faster. And I found that if I don't erase the whole screen the whole time, the sketch runs a lot faster when you're swi when you're switching menus, so it makes it a little bit nicer. Um, so that's why the, uh, those guys are there. Uh, and then when you read, or if you're on the settings page and you leave the settings page, you'll notice here, here's the EEPROM, right? That's where it saves the settings to EEPROM. Uh, if you're on page zero, which is the home page, what you want to do is uh, change the icon red and it avoids redrawing the screen uh, you know else draw the screen and then uh, the page ID 
uh, here's your time. If you wanted to change that to a shorter time, you know, you can just uh, change that to a shorter time and and whatnot. And that's up to you. So uh, the message area is, um, if you want the message area to do something, here's the button for that. So when that's pushed, right now it just clears the message out of there. Um, so if you wanted to put a message up there that stayed up there until it got confirmed by a user, you can leave that message there and then they can simply push on the message and then that would clear the message out of there. Uh, your backlight buttons for backlight up and backlight down, uh, those are pretty much for the backlight. Um, your sleep buttons are the buttons for sleep increase and sleep decrease. And then I added uh, a third button. If you notice here, uh, on my color converter, I have pretty much the same menu. I pretty much copied it for the color converter. But uh, I have space in here for another red minus, another box, and another green plus. And so you can put whatever adjustable item you want uh, in there. And, but the templates are already there. You just have to uncomment them. And then uh, down in the draw screen, it's, it's also uncommented too. Um, so, my kids are having lots of fun out there, I see. <laughs> uh, let me talk about this real quick. This is uh, this Void Y LED. I have a red and green bicolor LED on here. And so, when I push a button, uh, I can say Void uh, Y LED, which stands for kind of yellow. Um, and this flashes the, the yellow LED. And so, uh, if I scroll back up here to where my buttons are, um, and I say, you know, if page three, menu three, button six, I draw that on the uh, message box, and then Y LED 550. Now, this draws this message on the message box, so like you saw in the video. Then the delay comes from here. Uh, this Y LED 550 actually flashes the LED yellow red and green back and forth 550 times and then after that it clears the message uh, and so again you can take this out um, uh, if you want to and that would not clear the message and so the user would have to go up and then tap the message to clear the message and so that you can change this number for a shorter or longer delay time and uh, you can change that however you want really so that's uh, kind of the function of the Y LED um, Scroll back down here, and uh, I created a red flag and a green flag. And what that is is, if you have a variable and you want like a um, like a stop and go indicator, if the red flag is on after it gets done doing all that flashing, it'll light red again, or it'll light what you had it on. So that's uh, that's that's why that's there. Uh, redraw is just the page redraws. Uh, there's nothing really customizable in there. Uh, clear center is all have to do with redrawing. Uh, clear settings is uh, the extra drawing when the uh, you go you're leaving the settings screen. Uh, redraw the home screen. Uh, now this right here, the home screen and the menu one, menu two. Here's where you want to change the names of your buttons, um, not the actions, but the actual buttons themselves. And so here's where you go ahead and retype those guys here, except for the settings button. You might want to leave that alone if you want to get to your settings. Um, it's the same thing. Uh, all the menus and the home screen. I'm not going to bore you with going through all those guys there. So uh, the settings screen is pretty much the same. I wouldn't touch these two unless you want to customize something. Uh, but here again is that third option. If you want to uncomment this, uh, all the all the values are there to draw the boxes in the correct places along with uh, up above you, you see the, the correct button inputs and stuff like that. Um, this is uh, the battery voltage, and what that does is when you draw the setting screen, it puts the battery voltage in the message box, and this is how it does that. Um, sleep, sleep increase and sleep decrease. Some people ask, why in the world did I do this? The reason I did this is because I wanted it to write to EEPROM, and to write to EEPROM, you can only do 0 to 255. And so I made these just a small number, and then I say, I just chopped it up into thing rather than giving the user, you know, do you want one second, two second, three second, four, and then so on and so forth. So, you know, if you want to change those, knock yourself out. Um, and there's sleep increase and sleep decrease. Uh, scrolling down still is um, show sleep. That's uh, if you notice now the uh, 
um, these values are associated with the sleep time with that number that I was just talking about there. So, um, option three, up and down. Again, if you want to use that third option on the settings screen, you can just type it in here and you'll be all set. And so, um, here is where we get into our actual buttons, what this thing actually does. You can, uh, oh, I did put a few things in here. Uh, I put signal and signal active. Signal and signal active. Um, if you notice uh, on here, uh, this little icon here, uh, signal is drawing that white with a little antenna. Signal active will draw those little radio lines red to indicate that you have active signal. So if you're hooking this to an XB and you want to do RSSI or something like that, uh, you can actually have feedback on the LCD of doing that rather than just an LED. Um, but these are basically when I push menu one, button one, I want the action to be, and then whatever you do in here. You can see all these are pretty much blank, ready to be filled in by you. So um, we have all the buttons. Uh, your backlight, increase the backlight, and then write the, uh, the value, and then that's pretty much straightforward. Uh, the backlight bar, uh, we want that to uh, map to the little yellow bar there in the backlight adjustment. And also, uh, the antenna, uh, the antenna, <laughs> my kids are having a ride out there. They have no idea I'm recording this in here. Uh, the antenna is here, uh, this antenna position, I, I want to discuss that in a minute, but this just draws the antenna. Um, boxes is redrawing the screen. Uh, that's the white signal indicator. Um, signal activity, uh, the home icon, and um, erasing the icon is for something else that we'll get to later. Uh, your clear message. This right here, I wanted to show you the draw bat. This is what happens every. And uh, remember up there, I said um, you can set this to how often it checks and redraws the battery. Um, this does this, and it maps this to this voltage here, this 3,000, and it also maps. That's the low, and then it maps to this one, 4150, which is the high. So you want to adjust those two numbers according to what power you have in it. Uh, this is minimum 2 pixels, this is maximum 18 pixels, which is uh, the space that is, um, it's just basically this green rectangle right in here, it's 18 when it's full. And so um, you can see that uh, if the value is um, greater than 7, then do green, otherwise uh, do red when it gets down uh, very low. So uh, that's pretty much it. In a nutshell, if you have any questions, go ahead and shoot me an email, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, folks. One thing I forgot to mention is that uh, one little variable here called ANTPOS, uh, which is antenna position in my mind, uh, this guy right here is 278. So uh, if you notice this little signal icon here is in the, uh, the top of the title bar, that 278 dictates how far over that will be. So if you want it on this side, you can change that to a real low number. Um, and then you can move that guy without retyping all the code to, to draw it and everything like that. Just change that one number and you'll, you'll move the, the uh, icon on this side if you want to. Uh, thanks. Bye-bye.